The New Zealand Security Intelligence Service NZSIS or CIS, Māori, Te Pā Whakamaru Maru is New Zealand's primary national intelligence agency, responsible for national security including counter-terrorism and counter-intelligence and foreign intelligence. History The first national government established the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service on 28 November 1956 as the New Zealand Security Service, aiming to counter perceived increased Soviet intelligence operations in Australia and New Zealand in the wake of the Petrov Affair of 1954, which had damaged Soviet-Australian relations. The New Zealand Security Service was modelled on the British Domestic Intelligence Agency MI5 and its first Director of Security was Brigadier William Gilbert, a former New Zealand Army officer. The organisation's existence remained a state secret until 1960. According to the journalist and author Graham Hunt, domestic intelligence and counter subversion prior to the establishment of the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service was primarily in the hands of the New Zealand Police Force 1919 and of the New Zealand Police Force Special Branch. 1949 Another predecessor to the NZSIS during the Second World War was the short-lived New Zealand Security Intelligence Bureau CIB. The CIB, modelled after the British MI5, was headed by Major Kenneth Folkes, a junior MI5 officer. The conman Sid Ross duped Major Folkes into believing that there was a ''Nazi plot'' in New Zealand. Due to this embarrassment, Prime Minister Peter Fraser dismissed Folkes in February 1943 and the CIB merged into the New Zealand Police. Following the end of World War II in 1945, the police force resumed responsibility for domestic intelligence. The NZ intelligence community developed further in the 1960s due to the growing concern about political terrorism, improvements in weaponry, news media coverage, and frequent air travel. As terrorist threats grew along with potential connections to wider groups, the adaption of counter insurgency techniques increased in New Zealand. These developments culminated into the 1961 Crimes Act, enacted by Parliament. The Act would allow mindful targeting of possible terrorist suspects and scenarios. In 1969, the New Zealand Security Service was formally renamed the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service. That same year, the New Zealand Parliament passed an act covering the agency functions and responsibilities. The New Zealand Security Intelligence Service Act, Parliament subsequently made various amendments to the Security Intelligence Act, the most controversial probably Robert Muldoon's 1977 amendment, which expanded the SIS's powers of monitoring considerably. The 1977 Amendment Act went on to actively define terrorism as planning, threatening, using or attempting to use violence to coerce, deter, or intimidate. This was in order to a new emerging threat of international terrorism. Following the 1977 Amendment Act, Parliament enacted the Immigration Amendment Act of 1978, which went on to further expand the definition of terrorism. In 1987, Gerald Hensley, the then chair of NZIC, stated that the State Services Commission became attracted to the concept of comprehensive security. This took into account both man made threats such as terrorism and natural hazards. This was also in response to the severing of intelligence sharing arrangements New Zealand had with the United States in 1985 over nuclear policy. Following the attempted hijacking of an Air New Zealand flight and the bombing of the Rainbow Warrior in 1985, Parliament enacted the International Terrorism Emergency Powers Act 1987. The act contains censorship powers given to the government around matters of national security and terrorism. This was in stark contrast to New Zealand's respect of international trends and laws previously. At the end of the 20th century and beginning of the 21st, New Zealand's intelligence community adapted to emerging chemical, biological, and eventually cyber threats. These three areas became a key point of integration between the intelligence community agencies to meet the challenges of the 21st century. Cases of terrorism overseas promoted the NZ intelligence community to regularly exchange information and meet the growing demands of non-state actors. Topic. Purpose As a civilian organization, the Security Intelligence Service takes no part in the enforcement of security although it has limited powers to intercept communications and search residences. Its role is intended to be advisory, providing the government with information on threats to national security or national interests. It also advises other government agencies about their own internal security measures, and is responsible for performing checks on government employees who require security clearance. The CIS is responsible for most of the government's counter-intelligence work. The NZSIS is a civilian intelligence and security organization. 
Its threefold roles are to investigate threats to security and to work with other agencies within government, so that the intelligence it collects is actioned and threats which have been identified are disrupted to collect foreign intelligence to provide a range of protective security advice and services to government. In 2007, it was reported that the CIS wished to expand its role into fighting organized crime. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Organization. The NZSIS is based in Wellington with branches in Auckland and Christchurch. It has close to 300 full-time equivalent staff. The Director General of the NZSIS reports to the Minister in Charge of the NZSIS, as of 2018 Andrew Little and the Parliamentary Intelligence and Security Committee. Independent oversight of its activities is provided by the Inspector General of Intelligence and Security. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Directors The NZSIS is administered by a director. As of 2014 the NZSIS has had seven directors Brigadier Sir William Gilbert KBEDSO 1956 Judge Paul Molyneux CMG 1976 Brigadier Lindsay Smith CMG CBE 1983 Lieutenant General Don McIver CMG OBE 1991 Richard Woods, 1999 to 2006; Dr. Warren Tucker, 2006 to 2014; Rebecca Kittredge, CVO, 2014 present. Topic: Public profile. The NZSIS has become involved in a number of public incidents and controversies since its creation in 1956. In 1974, the NZSIS was the source of information that led to the arrest of Bill Such, an economist and former civil servant, on charges of spying for the Soviet Union. Such was acquitted, and the CIS was criticized for having accused him in the first place, although it has been alleged that the NZSIS was correct in its accusation. In 1981, the NZSIS was criticized for drawing up a list of 20 subversives who participated in protests against the 1981 Springbok Tour, a visit by South Africa's apartheid rugby team. That singling out of individuals as «subversives» was deemed by many to be a violation of the right to protest government decisions. Also in 1981, an NZSIS operative inadvertently left a briefcase, containing a copy of Penthouse, three cold meat pies, and notes of a dinner party hosted by a German diplomat, on a journalist's fence in Wellington, where it was found by the son of another journalist, Fran O'Sullivan. In 1985, the NZSIS failed to detect the French operation in which DGSE operatives bombed the Greenpeace vessel, the Rainbow Warrior, killing a photographer. In 1996, two NZSIS agents broke into the home of Aziz Chaudhry, an organizer with GATT Watchdog, which was holding a public forum and rally against an APEC Asia -Pacific Economic Cooperation trade ministers meeting hosted in Christchurch. After the Court of Appeal ruled that NZSIS had exceeded their legislated powers of interception, Parliament amended the NZSIS Act to give the NZSIS powers of entry into private property. In 2002, the NZSIS issued a security risk certificate for Ahmed Zaywi, an Algerian asylum seeker, and recommended his deportation. Zaywi was detained under a warrant of commitment. The Inspector General, Laurie Gregg, resigned in March 2004 after controversy over comments perceived as biased against Zaywi. The risk certificate was subsequently lifted, allowing him to remain. In 2004, allegations surfaced that the NZSIS was spying on Maori individuals and organizations, including those associated with the new Maori Party, for political purposes under the codename, Operation Leaf. A government inquiry led by the Inspector General of Intelligence and Security later rejected these claims in April 2005. The Prime Minister, Helen Clark, said the allegations were a hoax and asked the Sunday Star Times newspaper that printed them to apologize to their readers. A full apology and retraction was subsequently printed on the front page of the paper. In July 2004, the NZSIS was criticized for not knowing that Israeli intelligence contract assets had been in New Zealand purchasing New Zealand passports. Apparently the NZSIS only became aware after the New Zealand police found out, when mainstream New Zealand news publications reported. The case became world news and an embarrassment for CIS and Mossad intelligence agencies. 
Two of the Israelis involved, Uriel Kelman and Eli Kara, who had been based in Australia, were deported to Israel, while two other contractors believed to be purchasing passports, American ZF Barkin and New Zealander David Resnick, left New Zealand before they were caught and have presumably roamed free ever since. In December 2008, it was revealed that a man in Christchurch, Rob Gilchrist, had been spying on peace organizations and individuals including Greenpeace, Iraq war protesters, animal rights and climate change campaigners. Rob Gilchrist confessed to the allegations after his then partner, Rochelle Reese, found emails sent between him and Special Investigation Group SIG officers SIG has a connection with the CIS. Reese found the emails while fixing Gilchrist's computer. Gilchrist was said to have passed on information via an anonymous email address to SIG officers. Gilchrist had been paid up to $600 a week by police for spying on New Zealand citizens. His SIG contacts were Detective Peter Gilroy and Detective Senior Sergeant John Sjöberg. Gilchrist was reported to have been spying for the police for at least 10 years. Gilchrist also said he was offered money by Thomson Clark Investigations to spy on the Save Happy Valley Coalition, an environmental group. The incident implied members of New Zealand political parties were spied on as part of a focus on terrorism threats to national security. Rochelle Reese was a Labour Party activist as well as an animal rights campaigner. In November 2009, the CIS came under criticism for asking university staff to report their colleagues or students if they were behaving suspiciously. The CIS said it was part of an effort to prevent the spread of weapons of mass destruction. In July 2011, the NZSIS was involved in an investigation of Israeli backpackers who were in New Zealand at the time of the 2011 Christchurch earthquake, in which one of the Israelis was killed. The Israelis were alleged to have been Mossad agents attempting to infiltrate the New Zealand government's computer databases and steal sensitive information. The investigation concluded that there was no evidence of a Mossad operation. On March 1, 2018, the NZSIS released a memo confirming that an assassination attempt was made on Queen Elizabeth II during her 1981 visit in Dunedin despite alleged efforts by the New Zealand police to cover up the incident. The perpetrator was 17-year-old Dunedin teenager Christopher Lewis, who later became a criminal and died in prison in 1997 while awaiting trial for murder. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Access to records. Until a few years ago, the NZSIS was very reluctant to release information either under the Privacy Act or the Official Information Act. However it has now adopted a much more open policy, individuals who apply for their files will be given extensive information, with only certain sensitive details such as details of sources or information provided by overseas agencies removed. In certain respects the CIS still fails to meet its obligations under the Privacy Act but in these cases there is a right of appeal to the Privacy Commissioner. The Privacy Act does not cover dead people but their files are available under the Official Information Act. The service is also required to release other information such as files on organizations but the service is reluctant to do so, citing the extensive research it allegedly has to carry out in order to provide this information. A simple letter to the director is all that is required in order to obtain information. See also New Zealand intelligence agencies Foreign Espionage in New Zealand Canadian Security Intelligence Service Topic. Further reading Hager, Nikki 1996. Secret Power, New Zealand's Role in the International Spy Network. Nelson, New Zealand, Craig Potton Publishing. ISBN 0-908802-35-8. Hunt, Graham 2007. Spies and Revolutionaries, A History of New Zealand Subversion. Auckland, Reed Publishing. King, Michael 2003. The Penguin History of New Zealand. Auckland, Penguin Books. NZSIS Annual Reports http www.nzsis.government. NZ, Publications, Annual Reports. <laughs>